Hi guys, PJ here. Today I am working on a 2014 Ford B-Max. And this video is going to be nice and short. I'm going to show you the basics of how to remove the factory fitted radio from the car without causing any damage at all. I'll be removing it to actually fit a hands-free kit. And if you're doing the same, you're going to be needing a, what's called an SOT harness. I have one here made by Connex2 as the manufacturer. And the part number is ct 10 fd 3 Now you can normally get these on eBay or Amazon, that type of place. So uh, if you want to fit hands-free, that's probably the cable you're going to need. Just a quick uh, note concerning the patch leads if you are fitting a hands-free kit. A lot of these run like a later plug. It's the same as a Fiesta plug, which is this style. If that's the case, you'll need this part number. This is made by Auto Leads, by the way, not Connects 2, like the lead I've just shown you. SOT984, okay? And that's, that will list it for a Ford Fiesta, but a lot of these B-Maxers do use this later plug. So you won't know until you've got your radio out which plug you've got. You may leave, need the one that I've already shown you. Or you may, in fact, need one of these. Like I say, different company, but it's one I had lying around, so it's one I'll be using on this particular job. I will only be showing you how to remove the stereo because I'm very short on time, unfortunately. First things first, the correct tool to do the job. You are going to need something called a Bojo tool, which is a flash word for a plastic leverage device, such as this. These are then available on Amazon and stuff. They're about a pound. You can use any form of plastic scraper that's, you know, quite hard. Don't use a screwdriver. Obviously, screwdrivers will make a right mess of all the interior trim you'll damage it permanently. You don't want to do that. You need it to look factory fitted when it's put back together again without any damage. So you get your plastic leverage tool. And normally I start on the corner here. There's normally enough room to sort of shove it down and then lever and pop. You'll hear it ping and pop all the way. There we go, this one, uh, I had eased it already anyway, just for the sake of this video. Take that part out. Underneath you've got spring clips. See those? That's the things that have just popped out. Sometimes the little metal bits that are on the edge there fall off and tumble down your dashboard. Obviously you'll end up fishing them out from down below the centre console if that's the case. I've been quite lucky here, they're all still attached. So put that safely to one side, that piece. You are then left with some TX20s. One, two, three, four. Go ahead and remove your TX20s. Like so, all four TX20s are now removed. You'll notice these end ones hold in the lower plastic, whereas the middle ones hold in the top plastic, which overlaps the underneath piece, so it has to be removed. To do this, you'll find two slots in the top here. You can normally just sort of grab it and it is quite well in. They're on like a, like a clip, and I might need two hands to actually do it. If it doesn't go, you're gonna need your plastic leverage tool. Let me get my leverage tool. Well, that came off in a rush. Lots of noise, but don't worry. It's only on plastic spring clips. This car has never been in, part, in bits in the past, so it's obviously quite tight. But they are, let me just get a decent view for you. There's one clip. So there's quite a lot holding it on, hence it was quite well on. And as you will notice, they're all downward facing. So it's a case of pull the flap up, because it's got like a hook piece in the center. So pull that up and then pop and off, yeah? Take that safely out of the way, store that. You're then left with removing the actual plastic fascia. The radio is in two pieces. So it's got a plastic fascia with all the controls on, which has a cable linking it to a square metal box, which is the actual radio itself stored behind it, which is on runners. So we'll go ahead now and remove the front fascia. You're gonna need your TX20 again to remove these screws, one here, one at the back there, same on the other side. So once again, remove all four. I'll just quickly do that. Okay, we've removed one, two, three, four screws. Then quite literally grab and pull up. It's on little legs, look. It's on a cable at the back, uh, which is on a, a squeegee clip. You push it in and rotate. So if you want to remove that, you can. I don't need to, I'll just safely pop that out of the way over there. It can stay connected, it's not going to cause me any, any problems at all. Now we can actually start removing this. It's, not, it's on spring clips and they are quite large, just like the uh, 
the other ones I showed you. Sometimes you need to lever down the side here and you might need two hands. So I might have to put the camera down again. And what I'll do, I'll lever here whilst pulling here at the back at the same time and it'll pop this corner. And yes, it has. So one hand here, leverage tool here. I've done the same on the other side and the whole lot is starting to come loose now. There we go. You can hear the clips. Just watch your vents don't fall to pieces. You don't want this detaching. You need the vent to come with it. Because if the front of the vent comes off, all the little slots fall out and it takes ages to rebuild them. So try and keep it intact because as you can see, it's really, really quite feeble on the edge there. Just be careful of that. You're now left with spring clips at the bottom here. You might be able to just get your fingers under and tug it evenly. If it's tight, if it's never been in pieces before, like this car, you're going to need to ease it with your leverage tool. There we go. Like so, all the way around. And there we go. We can now remove the main piece. Like so. Obviously remove your electrical connector on the back which has a squeegee clip on it, just pinch and pull to remove and you're left with the main unit. With that safely out of the way and the squeegee clip disconnected, there's your clip look and like I say it's got like a, a push, uh, sorry a squeeze clip on it there just to remove it. You're then going to need a TX25, yes Ford would have been awkward, you're going to need a TX25 for these two, not a TX20 which you've been using for everything else. Unscrew both of those uh, mounting screws those safe you can't get them mixed up with your tx20s because they're a lot shorter so there's no no possible chance of you mixing them up these these are literally half the length of the ones that you've previously taken out in fact i'll show you so you can see there we go the fat short one is the one that holds the steel radio in and this long one here on the right is to the plastic fascia so quite a difference there in screw sizes once that's done Watch the bottom of your dashboard as you pull this out because this is metal, you don't want to damage it in any way. In fact, you probably drape a rag over it or a bit of cardboard if you, you know, if you, if you want to. It's on clips and it is rather tight. There we go. And there we go. You've got a connector at the back there. You've got your twin fracker aerial connector there on squeezy clips. Just pinch and pull. And again, you've got a pinch tab at the top of that and pull to remove. And that is how you remove the radio and a Ford B-Max. If you've got any questions, pop them in the comments below. I will do my best to answer them as quickly as possible. Just bear in mind, I, you know, I do get bombarded with questions, so it may take me a little time to get back to you. So, thank you very much for watching, and goodbye for now.